I'm Steve Suter. Let's break down a punt return from New Year's 2004. Town Stadium in Jacksonville. In fact, extra seats added today. A crowd of over 80,000 expected for the Toyota Gator Bowl matching Maryland and West Virginia. It's all about Steve. Let's ride. James Punt towards Suter, who backpedals to take it at about the 23 yard line. Steve Suter gets to the outside, uses his block as well. The team I hated the most was West Virginia. Steve Suter was one of my receivers back in 2002, 2003. He was one of my best friends. Suter and I actually drove down to the game together, if you can believe that. We took my mom's old Acura SUV and we spent a lot of time together in the car that drive down. A little bit of a rocky road getting to that point. We started off 0-1 and then we ended up losing to Florida State. We had lost two games early in the season. We had a long road ahead. We were able to come together as a team. We knew it was now or never and we ended up going on a big winning streak. We ended up losing one more game that year and we ended up beating West Virginia early on in the season. They came here, we beat them 35 to seven. And sure enough, we faced them again one more time. We go into a restaurant and there's nobody there. We say, great, you know, we'll get a table, took a table, sat down right away and, uh, you know, started enjoying our company and enjoying our meal. Well, halfway through the dinner, um, there must have been a, a, a West Virginia event that took place uh, earlier in the day that had just let out. Well, the floodgates opened up. And it is packed with Mountaineers. And so we all kind of looked at each other, we were like, I knew it was bad news. Well, um, you know, me, I just kind of kept my head down and, and, and we kept ourselves. Uh, all of a sudden, um, there was a chant that started up in the restaurant and the chant went, Rashid Marshall, Rashid Marshall. So obviously they were trying to take a dig at my quarterback and I wasn't having it. We had that coaching change and, you know, Coach Rodriguez and I didn't really mesh. He saw a different side of the game than I did and I knew that I could play. I knew I was talented enough to play at that level. Unfortunately, he didn't really give me the opportunity to play at that level. And I went from playing, from starting under Don Nealon to not even seeing the field, when I thought that there might be an opportunity for me to come home and play at the University of Maryland in front of my family, friends, hometown, it was a no-brainer. So after a couple of chants, had some choice words for everybody in the lobby, very loudly. They wanted to fight the crowd. Well, you know, I don't think that they really thought that they were going to take on all two, three hundred Mountaineers, but. They definitely stood up in their seat and, you know, said, hey, if you got a problem, let, you know, come here and talk to us. And, and me, I, I just want to get out of there. I want to finish my meal. I want to get out of there as quick as possible. It was just another event that added fuel to our fire. Like, man, we're going to stop these kids. Two teams on a roll in the Toyota Gator Bowl. Maryland really traveled uh, down to Jacksonville for this Gator Bowl game. I remember it being electric coming out in pregame warmups and I saw nothing but red and I probably wanted to see nothing but red. I didn't really pay attention to the blue and gold fans because I knew they were screaming uh, derogatories towards me. We were mad. I was mad. I felt disrespected because they played a Miami team that year that was all world and they played them tough. They didn't even beat them, but they played them tough. And so seven weeks later, they're better than us. You know, a lot of guys, you know, took that to heart. We knew that we were the better team going into that football game. We were so confident that we were gonna win. Again, we hadn't lost West Virginia in three years. So what's one more time, right? We didn't believe it, and we wanted to go out there and prove it. Hi everybody from Jacksonville, Florida, All Tell Stadium, Happy New Year. With a big ass like Ryan Day, with numbers in line. And that's all we're gonna do is play. Let's get down with that 3 One, two, three. I think uh, being emotionally ready to play them because they'll be very emotionally ready to play us. Steve Suter for the Terrapins, the dangerous one. Steve back then, of course, never fair called anything. 
He wanted to catch the ball and make a play, uh, which I respected him for, because I would have waved my hand every single time the ball was in the air. When you're a punt return unit that is labeled dangerous, the guys coming down to tackle you are nervous. I don't know what it was. The punt prior to that, I only returned it like five yards. They pinned me on the sideline. Man, these guys can't tackle. So next time I get a chance, I get the ball in my hand. It could be good. Let's fast forward. But I take a knee, and Bruce Perry, great running back for us, comes over and takes a knee next to me. And we're, I'm exactly sure what we were talking about. But then the third down play happens. And I just looked at him, and you don't say this often because the percentages are so, so low. But I looked at him, I said, Bruce, this is going to the house. Try it out on the field, and sure enough, the quick snap before Maryland can get set. Backpedaling is Suter. Looks up to take it. He'll get it at the own, his own 23. Up to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. Running for the sidelines, the 40, the 45, midfield. Guys on that play always block their butts off for me. And that goes into them knowing I never fair caught a punt. So when we go out there, give me all you got because I'm going to give you everything I got. And you know it's not going to be for a wasted effort. If you, if you try to block your guy as hard as you can, I'm bringing the ball back. So that attitude of that team and that punt return unit, it was just, we knew every time we had a chance. The 45, the 40, shooter down to the 35, the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Steve Shooter, 77 yards, wow! You could see that coming. West Virginia out punted its coverage. A big, high, deep punt. It gave Suter way too much room to maneuver. That was probably a 4 6 running into the end zone, not the 4 3 I was known for because there was no reason to get any more winded. There was nobody there. I think it's Curtis Williams, it was Ani, and it's Ray Cussis, those three guys that are out there waiting for me. Some guys just have a knack. You make the first guy miss. And then we just trot in the end zone all together like a little pack. And it's like, the route is on. Let's go. 17 zip in the second, and we not stop. Back then, Steve had his left wrist taped. And on his wrist, it said DAD, D-A-D. Uh, and nobody really knew what was going on back at that point in time. But uh, Steve had told me on our 15-hour trip down to Jacksonville that his dad was actually sick. Uh, at that moment, and that was the first game that his dad had missed his whole career. I remember being like, my dad, my dad. Uh, so it was cool. Those kind of plays are, those kind of plays are devastating. A special teams touchdown hurts, and we liked hurting them. After Steve returned the punt, you know, it, it wasn't time to relax. I really wanted to make a statement even though Steve running that punt back was a huge momentum kick for us, I wanted to keep it going. I mean, I wanted to go back out on the field and, and continue to work and operate, but I knew we were hitting on all cylinders that day. I mean, when you score, um, you know, running a punt back and having the day that we did, you know you're going to put a lot of points on the board, and I was excited to go back out. Every single series, I couldn't wait to go back out on the field and, and really show those Mountaineers how, how I can play. So the play, the catch, as everybody likes to call it, the one-handed tip to yourself, grab it with the other hand, one-handed, and get up, throw the ball up, and look at the crowd. We all want to remember that play. You know, <laughs> that ball wasn't necessarily supposed to go to Steve. Growing up playing your whole life, you kind of knew when, when it was your time to make a play and make something happen, you did, and Steve sure enough did. And I saw Steve, he had a step on his man. So in my mind, I'm saying, well, let me kind of get out of the pocket here and just let it go. He just wound up and threw it as hard as he could, as far as he could, and Suter, Suter on the deflection. Unbelievable. Yeah, pose for that one, 42 yards. Oh, see what you can do with a light stomach? Come. I mean, you talk about a judgment. Cat's out of the bag. I wasn't trying to catch it. I was trying to bat it down. I'm supposed to run a post on that play, 
and Rich Parson is the slot receiver and he's running a wheel route, so I'm posting he's gonna wheel around it. Scotty just says, let's see if he can make a play and chucks it. And I get inside position on him and I real he's kind of like tugging on my back, so it's gonna be hard for me to get off my feet. I can feel him on my shoulder, so the jump is gonna be a problem. Remarkable adjustment. No, he just gets inside, it's good position. Gets his left hand up. So I'm like, I gotta bat this down because I don't want him to pick it off. So I try to get as high as I can with him on my back and try to get my hand on him to bat it down. And I didn't hit it right with my hand, obviously. And it's, I could still see it though. I was like, in a split second, I was like, wait a minute. Now I think I can catch it. That, that's a fantastic catch. And you know, if you're Lance Frazier, you gotta be frustrated. You can't cover a guy any better than him, can you? Yeah, the junior. Manchester, Maryland has put on a show today. Four catches, 83 yards, plus a 76-yard touchdown on a punt return. I mean, that was the defining moment of our day. That's how our day went. Every single play was going our way. It was, it was cool to see.